Hey, 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 man. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Check it out, man. Look, today I read to the Murder in the Six Toronto Daily Game War Part 3, man. I had to put this in. Muffin. Three parts. No telling how many parts. I might fucking around and make it. This a fourth part. <laughs> no telling how I'm feeling, man. Look. But anyway, man, look. I ain't gonna waste no more time. Only thing I want y'all boys to do is like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the post notification bell, man, so you can be notified every time I post, bro. Let's get into it, bro. What the last place? This video is this. sponsored. I start that at 5212. 5212. 5212. Golly, come on. Come on. You know I got you. One, break the walls down. I must start right about here. Oh my Since God. the killing of his brother Foolish, Top I 5 had. went from shirt off shortly to shoot out shortly. Golly! And he appeared to be surrounding himself with the most feared shooters that Toronto had to offer. Specifically, his homie Flipper from Jungle. He's currently Flipper. accused of the March 19, 2019 murder of Jerome Bell, who went by the name Murder. Murder was also a rapper in the Toronto scene, known for rapping Shots Up Mafia, and after this alleged killing, it would take Toronto police around a year to catch up with Flipper. During which time, along with fellow GG Top 5, Flipper would make numerous songs with a lot of lyrics referencing the dirt that he was doing in the streets. There was a track Drill Some More, where Flipper claims that his 30 cents an op to the Lord, saying that the ops might have got one of theirs, but he's gotten four. He straight up says that he's catching bodies in the Camry, along with more lyrics on the track Drill 6, where he says that he is the Somali catching bodies. But the GGs wouldn't stop there. Only a few months later, another life will be claimed under very familiar circumstances. A teenage driller by the name of Clutch, who is allegedly even the cousin of Top 5, but came from Jungle's op block of Fallstar. Now, Clutch had apparently been clowning the death of Top 5's brother Foolish, who was murdered outside of a shopper's mart drugstore. Apparently, Clutch posted since deleted clips to social media, mocking Foolish with a shopping bag from the store that he was killed outside of. And so, oh. some time after- <laughs> Golly! Now, that, that's a different type of cre- Hey, yo, bro. That's some creative, bro. That's some creative shit. Think about it, bro. This nigga posted a picture with the- ba I would've never thought of that. Just say, you know what I'm saying? What y'all niggas would've thought of that? You know what I'm saying? If you were- you had, If a nigga had a die, you would've went back to the place- and would have thought about the mall and the in the in the store this nigga was in? I wouldn't have thought of that. I would never thought to do something like that. After making these posts, apparently, whilst on the way home from a night playing video games with friends, 16-year-old Clutch was gunned down in a shooting at 30 Full Staff Ave near James Street, with three suspects being seen fleeing in a dark Honda. Everybody in the community clearly came down because we're literally in shock because he's like the most innocent child. Um, the sweetest kid, funny, he's hilarious, does not cause trouble. Following the murder of Clutch, his name would become something of a catchphrase to Top 5, who would say that he was smoking clutch at any opportunity where the song Golly. lyrics ig lives or even interviews so he with couldn't have been that innocent if they killed the nigga you know what i'm saying like y'all oh he was so innocent they everybody just say these niggas be so innocent right knowing these niggas were really you know what i'm saying they were doing doing their ish you know what i'm saying niggas be thinking these niggas be innocent DJ yeah, Academics and Presser, where Top 5 is clearly just itching to disc clutch. Can <laughs> we smoke on this? Smoke of course! On this? Of course! Okay, so we're smoking out the pound then. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just don't clutch. smoke. Just don't, no, just don't. Clutch. Don't, no, don't. Clutch. Don't smoke on no apps. Don't just smoke. Just smoke. I'm smoking on that clutch. No, I'm, I'm, rest in peace to whoever clutches. Anyway, like a lot of Toronto mans who catch a body and do the race, Flipper couldn't outrun the cops forever. Around a year after the murder of murder, Flipper, real name Saeed Mohadeen, is arrested for murder on March the 12th, 2020. And then, in a shock turn of events, while in custody, he is charged with another murder for apparently having taken out a reputed Toronto mob boss. Seriously, if the oh, cops are to be believed, oh, yeah, Flipper would. Keep this, bro. A mob boss? Y'all know how... Y'all know how deadly... I think I covered this nigga, Flipper. They say he took out some mob... Bro, do you know how fucking good you gotta be to take out a mob boss? Really think about it, bro. You know how all... How many people this nigga got, bro? The mob is just like a fucking army. Like, 
like the president, a mob boss. He got these security over here. You got these niggas. You got these niggas on payroll. Hell, he even got some of the police on the payroll, bro. You know how hard that is to take out a mob boss? Yo, this nigga really, 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 really like that, boy. Boy, you even think about... Man... Was out here icing made men from the mafia. And of course, after his arrest on two bodies, Top 5 was positively beaming with pride over his homie's many deadly crimes. I hang with demons. Flipper just got caught with two bodies. He's gonna beat it, innocent. Flipper. Flipper. But they just, that was my big dog. They just arrested him for two bodies. So what? this nigga bragging about the body. So he's saying he gonna get beat the body, but he's actually coming out saying this nigga did the. Oh, Top 5 is a different. It's a different breed, my guy. But if you thought that was crazy enough, it doesn't end there. Because even after getting taken to jail, Flipper ended up going viral on social media once again after getting his hands on a phone in jail and recording a video with him and all of his homies smoking big gas in the prison wing, a clip that was eventually released on Top 5's Instagram. It looks like a pre-COVID party, but sources tell City News that video was taken within the past month here at Toronto South Detention Center. That video shows several high-profile inmates smoking pot, using contraband technology, and ignoring yeah. all COVID precautions. Featured in the video is Toronto rapper Flippa, Saeed Mohayadin, who is currently facing two murder charges for his alleged role in the March 2019 death of Jerome Bell. After the death of Smoke Dog at the hands of 21 Neat, along with the murder of his brother 22 Neat, both sides were mourning a great deal of loss. And sadly, the grief was far from over for the Up Top movement, who would go on to lose yet another brotherly rap duo in very similar circumstances. The Tall Up Twins, who had built a decent reputation in Toronto's rap Tall scene up. by this point, having dropped their biggest song 456 with Burner Bands and Houdini, would soon find themselves in trouble. In October 2018, Tyreek Noseworthy, aka Double Trouble 4400 of the Tall Up Twins, along with Burner Bands and FB from the Up Top movement, was spotted late in the evening of the 25th, gathering a large number of plants at a marijuana grow facility. Only problem was, that's not their grow facility. They ended up getting confronted by three men who owned and operated the licensed grow, with one of those guys getting pistol whipped and eventually all of them being tied up. Now, unfortunately for the robbers, a female associate of the owners hid in a car outside and called the police. When the cops arrived, the thieves did the dash, with one making off in a car and the others running into a nearby cornfield. Thing is, those guys running were absolutely no match for the police's search team, which used dogs on the ground and choppers in the sky to hunt down these grow robbers. By 4 a.m., everyone oh, yeah. was in cuffs, no, including FB, who was even yeah, bitten by really? a police dog. And the cops took the trio oh, of yeah, rapid no robbers problem, away, man. along with a U-Haul truck, no full of stolen weed, weed and fully loaded weapons, fitted with laser sight scopes and a bunch of ski masks. All this would make building a case as easy as Lego for the Toronto cops, with things being made even worse by the fact that when they were in jail, FB and Tyreek went live on Instagram, taunting their capturers and waving around a prison shank for good measure. I only got a cruise, nigga. Tyreek of the Tall Up Twins ended up getting sentenced to four years after pleading guilty, later being bailed and doing the dash, with him currently being wanted for breaching his terms, along with FB who got a little over four years for his involvement in the case. Meanwhile, Burner Bands pled not guilty and is still yet to face trial. However, it wasn't Tyreek of the well, Tall Up Twins that would years, suffer the most right? tragic fate, because you know only three months after one Tall Up Twin, twin was sentenced to four years Crazy. in jail for the grow robbery, his brother Tyrone Noseworthy, aka 4400 from the Tall Up twins would get into a deadly confrontation at a condo party in Lakeshore West. At around 9pm on January the 31st 2020, two groups at the condo party had an argument in front of everyone, and by 10.30pm, two men had opened fire in the unit and outside in the hallway. The scene was pure chaos and three people wound up dead under highly suspicious circumstances. Among the deceased were Jaden Coley, Joshua Gibson Skier, and Tyrone Noseworthy of the Tall Up Twins. The barrage of bullets began to fly at 10.20 last night, creating a scene of panic that's becoming all too routine in Toronto. Security guards inside the condo helped save one person's life according to property management. Sadly, three young men, aged just 22, 20 and 19, weren't so fortunate. But the craziest part is the police said initial evidence pointed to a double murder-suicide, with it being suggested that one of the people in the shootout may have killed two people and then themselves. But this version of events has been disputed by some, and the only thing that's really clear is that not many people will ever know the true circumstances of what went down in that condo on that day. But regardless, this was a big loss for everybody that repped up top. But arguably, their biggest loss was just around the corner, as in May 2020, we would see the tragic loss of rapper Houdini. Houdini.
the baby Aside sees. from Presser, who by 2020 was living it up in LA, far away from the mean streets of Jane and Finch, the Houdini next biggest prospect the coming out of the sister. area was Houdini. Yeah. He'd been making major moves in music at this point. His track Late Nights with Burner Bands was doing well, even going gold. He had a big song in November 2018 with Presser called Up and Down. His 2019 mixtape Who I Am landed at 27 on the Canadian independent music charts. And one of his latest releases, a feature on Killy's track VVs, released by Six Buzz, the Toronto rap media organization that had just signed a joint venture deal with Warner Music Canada, had people thinking mainstream recognition was just around the corner for a young Houdini. But the month after this release, tragedy would strike once again. As on May 26, 2020, Houdini is murdered in downtown Toronto in a brazen broad daylight hit. A lot of the incident was caught on camera, with a six-year-old girl even being caught in the crossfire. According to police, a blue VW Tiguan had waited for Houdini for around 30 to 40 minutes. And when he was spotted, a bunch of guys jumped out the car and went straight for Houdini with guns. Tributes pouring in today for DiMargio Jenkins, the 21-year-old musician also known as Houdini, was shot and killed at King and Blue Jays Way Tuesday afternoon. Police believe Jenkins and a 15-year-old male who was injured in the shooting were targeted. The third victim, a 27-year-old yeah, woman, so was an innocent bystander, right. according to investigators. Police say the suspect vehicle was parked for nearly 40 minutes, waiting for the two victims to return to their car. This was another tragic loss for the city of Toronto. Big rappers tributed him, like Meek Mill and Tory Lanez, and it said that many shootings went down in the city following this killing as the war in the streets heated up once again. In fact, things got so bad that Houdini's own memorial service got shot up 60 times in a shocking scene also caught on video. Once again, I probably shouldn't show you that on YouTube. But even more crazy than the fact that the ops tried to shoot up Houdini's memorial service is the fact that people on Houdini's side pulled straps and shot back, with the cops eventually closing in and only locking up people on Houdini's side that were shooting back trying to defend themselves. After being hit in the gunfight and caught shooting back whilst on bail and parole, GD from up top gets arrested, as well as Bernard Bands, who was still on bail for that grow robbery gone wrong that he hadn't yet gone to trial for. Anywho, the loss of Houdini was devastating for Toronto rappers once again. Yet another case of a massive loss of potential for one of the city's most promising artists. It's hard to think about how much Houdini probably would have achieved by now had he not been taken from us so soon. I'd love to be able to say that after all of these losses in the streets, that the surviving rappers of the Toronto drill scene would begin to move correctly, going forward with a more positive approach to life. But sadly, that's not the case. And when it comes to negativity, oh, oh, disrespect, oh, no, and disregard for human life, at this point, positive. there is one man whose name stands above uh, all others crazy, in Toronto. And that man's name is Top 5. Does your resume look like this? This is not a great resume. Oh this is not going to catch my attention. I need block, air block. I'm ass, bro. Top 5 had been looking for trouble all 2020, being seen on social media pulling up to the basketball court on the op block of full staff, dissing dead ops constantly in songs and on social media, and even putting time limit bounties on ops chains, telling DJ Snoopy on live in front of the whole world to see that he would snatch his chain in seven days. Snoopy, my nigga, are you with the GG? Okay, Snoopy. man, of everybody watching us, do you I want to take your chain? I'll give us seven days to take your chain. I you, promise you your chain. You want a cookie? Seven days. Do it. Do you want to do it? <laughs> Seven days, count everybody, everybody watching this. Seven days, Snoopy's not gonna have his chain. Uh, if you agree with me right now, uh, uh, do you think we so can't sad. do it? You want my chain? Do you think we can't do it? Do you want to wear my chain? Seven day challenge, Snoopy. Do you want to wear my chain? On my mother's life, I will shit on your chain. You, I'll put on why, my chain. Why do you want to read up? Yeah, I know if it's a long pun thing. I will shit on his chain. Yeah, I know if it's a long pun thing, my Okay, but agree with me. Do you think I can't take your chain? Listen, I, uh, what's this gonna do? What you, what Don't is? say what's this. Do you think I can't take Brother, your chain? You're not gonna take my chain. I'm gonna take it off my neck and give it to you, and then you gotta make sure. Snoopy, stop back. switching it up. Do you think I can't take your chain? Go give ask me, the, You can't. Answer my question. You top five can't take my chain. A seven day challenge. Do seven you want the seven day challenge? challenge? You sure you can handle GGG? It's the 23rd right now. Everybody remember what I told you. Snoopy's chain's gonna go missing just now. Some, something told me not to wear my chains to the mall today. Luckily, I didn't. Someone went and got my pendant, man. They got my brother's pendant. Yes, top oh. five really did. <laughs> oh, man, you lost the challenge, cuz. You got your pendant took. Dang. So, top five was right. He took that man pendant. But he didn't take his chain, though. He took his pendant. But he took the most important thing. But he didn't take the full chain. So, technically, he really didn't take the chain. He just took the pendant. But that's the most important thing on the chain. The chain itself, you know what I'm saying? It's cool and all. But what counts is your pendant. Your pendant is the most vital thing on your chain. You know what I mean? 
did take that chain, as well as yeah. Snoopy's Gucci hat, which he tossed onto the highway. That's the kind of timing Top 5 was on. All the while, shootings are going on in the streets, including one where 27 shots were fired, hitting two people. Toronto police say nearly 30 shell casings were found at the scene when they arrived. Five, two men five, were located five, with gunshot wounds, one in critical condition <laughs> and the other with leg injuries. <laughs> Now, this incident was apparently the shooting of fellow promising Toronto rapper Doovie. He's well known for dissing Houdini in songs, with this shooting coming strangely the same day that he released his banger of a song, Nightmares. Doovie fortunately survived this incident. However, sadly, around a month later, NHS JJ would be murdered. Both Doovie and JJ were from Southside Jane and had been going back and forth with rappers from North Jane and Jungle for quite some time. And following these tragic shootings, Top 5 would gloat even bringing up these incident on a live stream with DJ Academics saying some wild shit. What? JJ oh, just got shit. packed! They said, ask top five if Doovy, the hottest in the city. Who's Doovy? He just he just got shot like last month. That's what I was going to ask. Yo, top five. You don't have yo, to answer it. Top but five, the thing that happened bro. with Doovy, was it you, yes or no? No, yo, oh, stop, 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 Yes, DJ Academics' Toronto man. street streams are so wild, he's got to step in to make sure nobody cops to any crimes. And that would be pretty hard considering the fact that Top 5 would regularly jump on stream with academics to lay out all of the street yeah, goings on that have been happening in Toronto. Let me, let me tell you what happened in Toronto. Bugs, you know Bugs, right? Yeah. He got a leg ass. Oh, sh Cry oh. Cry oh. Ah. Oh. There's a next rapper named Snoopy. You could go on YouTube, I took his chain. You in the mall. You took his chain? And I told him I'm gonna take it in 14 days on live. And I got it on the ninth day. There's like seven you artists seven days, in Toronto dude. that all got shot. And like all got leg so you know what I mean? Yo, you terrorizing the city! I'm a fucking demon. Academics even went as far as to get Top 5 and Doovie on the same stream. And the resulting argument between these two dissing each other's dead homies was chilling. You're a snitch, kid. You got a leg us, fam. <laughs> You're a snitch. Your bro died you off of a leg us. What the fuck? JJ just got packed. Doovie, I'm your snitch. JJ! Yo, Doovie, Doovie, I do it. Now, all of this beef going on on Academics' streams was a big deal. Academics has pretty much the most influential rap platform in America, held the entire world even. And let's not forget the fact that Academics pretty much came up off of reporting Chicago drill street goings on. And for the first time, he was showing the world that the streets of Toronto were dangerous and filled with demons too. And these streams with the likes of Top 5, Chromaz, Pressa, and other Toronto rap legends did a lot to put faces from Toronto on the map in the USA. However, you can kind of tell from the way that Top 5 got on these streams and would talk about crime so casually that he was perhaps beginning to take that demon shit a little too far. On January the 14th, 2021, he dropped his track Two Cases, a tribute to his GG bro Flipper, who is still incarcerated on those two murder cases with top bro, five. Bro, bro, bro. Let's get on top five, bro. I gotta talk about this, man. This nigga top five really isn't a rapper. He really, if you think about it, top five is just a nigga, a, a street nigga, troll nigga that trolls on rap. He's really a troll that raps, you know what I mean? That's what he really is, if you think about it. Top five, he ain't all that good in rapping, you know what I'm saying? He really not, you know what I'm saying? He ain't the best rapper, but he can troll in his raps, you know what I mean? So he really, he's more of a troller, a troller than a rapper. So we, I really don't consider top five a rapper, to be honest, but, hey. By dropping some demonic me, lyrics, man. dissing dead ops like Slugger and Clutch. But only two weeks after the song Two Cases dropped, Top 5 would end up catching a case of his own. On the evening of January the 31st, 2021, emergency services were called to Jane Street and Falstaff Avenue after reports of automatic gunfire. And when cops arrived, they found a man inside of a vehicle suffering gunshot wounds, who was subsequently pronounced dead at the scene. Uh, they found this victim at the scene, uh, suffering multiple gunshot in York, wounds York, in life-threatening condition. Uh, but that victim was pronounced dead here at the scene. The victim was named as 20-year-old student Hashim Omar Hashi, with the cops claiming that he was just an innocent accounting student with no affiliation to gangs, just in the wrong place at the wrong time. But here's where things get weird. Just a week after that killing, Top 5 out of nowhere posts a news report to his Instagram, where he appears to defend his violent lyrics, essentially saying that he only raps about violence for money and that he's not really like that, with the full segment emerging on global news. Top 5 is part of a thriving Toronto hip-hop scene Scene. It's internationally recognized thanks to artists like Drake, Tory Lanez, and The Weeknd. But this rapper says there's also a stigma related to crime and violence. To be honest, people see shootings here and they're scared. Man, he says artists nigga, here have become five, polarizing man. figures, including himself. Millions of YouTube views, this. tens of thousands Boy, of Instagram followers. It, but like many top five also has his critics. 
community members saying his music sends a violent message. He says that's what sells, but it's up to all of them to change that messaging. Rap less about the violence, because you don't want to eager somebody else to go do some retaliation, like rap less about violence. And we're getting to that, you know what I mean? We're getting into the industry. We're out here, we're trying to make the right records. Top five there, acting very different to how he does on Academics' streams when he's talking about bodies on bodies that his team beats. And a week later, it became very clear why top five might have wanted to scrub up his image in the media a little bit, as he's arrested for being an accessory to the murder that had happened two weeks before. But in a surprising turn of events, they didn't have enough evidence to hold him. And top five was released from custody, later posting a hilarious clip where he claimed to have given his lawyer a GGG train and saying that he's 234K in front of him. Hey, bro, I got my lawyer with me. All out of dolls. 234K. Cheers! Yeah, Always for years. <laughs> Look at this. Look at that. I'll tell you what, Top 5 is really going to put his lawyer's kids through college at this rate. Because around three months after being released on accessory charges, the police revealed that those charges had been upgraded to full-blown murder in the first degree. With the police naturally being unable to locate Top 5 and warning the public that he is still at large, violent, and dangerous. So Top 5 is literally on the run for murder at this point. And you'd think that he would, you know, lay low keep a low profile, but no. Top 5 continued to post on his IG story, essentially taunting the cops who were desperate to find him and couldn't, going on to post up stories that reference his February Global News segment, saying that his violent lyrics are all cap and he's just trying to sell music for money, as well as him referencing his top lawyer, saying the cops upgraded his charges to murder with no new evidence. Top 5 also went live around the same time on Instagram, dissing Clutch. Clutch! Clutch! RP to all fallen fucking soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> you guys miss me, eh? Well, I miss my nigga Clutch. Who's gonna snitch on top five? That's a good question. <laughs> Who's gonna snitch on me? Clutch is gone! Top 5 went live again on the 22nd, defending himself, saying he didn't do shit. All the while, people are piling in the comments saying Toronto police are punching the air right now. Oh my god, run away, top five, run. Run, baby, run. Run. They can't catch you. Like, I ain't do shit. Everybody know I ain't do shit, but... It's 144, but I'm still smoking clutch. And at a certain point, the mere fact that Top 5 was on the run for murder and still posting to his social media becomes breaking news in and of itself. Partis has been connecting with fans on social media. There's just one problem. He's also on the run, wanted for murder. That appears to be top five, speaking out on a live streaming Instagram video over the weekend. His viewers tell him he's a fugitive. One asking, isn't top five on the run for a body? The rapper seems to talk back. The only run I know is the treadmill. Now I know what question you're thinking, people. Surely top five doesn't still go live with DJ Academics whilst he's on the run for murder, right? Hey, oh, he does. Dude. Top five still turned up to DJ Academics' live Twitch stream this whilst on the thought, run for murder. With Academics seemingly unaware of the magnitude like, of top five situation, live. all the likelihood that the feds will be watching everything. and lurking, so looking for clues on the whereabouts of Toronto's top team. I thought it was just a song, but I heard they just caught you for two cases. He said, bro, I'm gonna beat that. Easy. Trying to frame me for some shit, nigga. Are they, are they trying to frame? Me? Oh no, nah. oh, man. He on the run from what? Ain't no running going on. What y'all talking about? Yeah, right. I do need to get a get a little running. I'm gonna get a little run going on. Ain't nothing wrong with a little running. At this point, Top 5 was basically on a combined press run and on the run for murder, making headlines again when he went live the following month, this time seeking a sit-down with then-Mayor of Toronto, John Tory, saying that he wants to speak to the mayor personally before he speaks to the cops. I'm telling them, if they want to meet me, tell John Tory to reach out. If John Tory reaches out, I'm linking up with Eddie. Yo, you guys want to link up? Call John Tory and tell him I want to have a sit-down for 30 minutes. I want to spit my facts, and he spits his facts. I run Toronto. In response to Top 5's offer of a sit-down, Toronto Mayor John Tory released a simple statement saying, I know the devastation and trauma that murders in our city have caused families and neighbourhoods, and it's very troubling to know that somebody charged with murder has so far not made himself available to the authorities. But Top 5 didn't let what the Mayor had to say or that body hanging over his head stop him from pushing his career forward either, and in August 2021, he would go live once again at a recording studio to assure fans that he's still got time to work on that album whilst he's on the run for a murder. Okay, we're at a thousand already. Yo, yeah, listen, I want this to make the news tomorrow. Here. Fuck it. You guys want to know where I am? Are you bloods? Album, Look. Bro. Look, Toronto's fucking mine. I'm in the studio working on this fucking album. I caught that nigga slipping, shot him in the back. And when I'm in the staff, I'm off that clutch pack. And when I'm in the E, I'm off that sluggy. Fuck sluggy. Fuck clutch. Nothing to snitch about. And I'll never ever be a snitch. I'm not part of no crimes. Nothing. I'm not with the shits. 
Everything you guys see is cap. The only thing real is clutch dead. And of course, top five goes on to taunt his newest top op once again, Mayor John Tory. Fuck you. Hey, where the fuck's John Tory? And I still want to have my fucking dinner with you, little f Like, the fuck, you taking me on this joke? Toronto's fucking mine. Hennessy. John Tory. Henny and pussy. <laughs> when you're around me. Naturally, all of this brazen behavior and mayor calling out had top five quite literally going top five on Toronto's most wanted list. But yeah. it would turn out that top five yeah. wasn't just top going on the run and going live all of these times just for a laugh. Oh no, all of this sus activity on the internet was actually genuinely part of his promotional plan to push a new song that he released whilst on the run for murder, movie featuring YG and Press's older brother Boondog, who did 10 years for that YBK conspiracy charge at the start of this story, getting out at the end of 2020, flying straight out to Dubai for a celebratory vacation and beginning to drop songs under the name Boondog with tracks like Brick for the Low and True Story both going very hard. But it was Boondog's appearance on Movie with YG and Top 5 that caught the attention of the drill community once again. On the track, Boondog says that he's smoking Sizzlack as well as saying they're gonna murk Doovie and send him to JJ. And of course, Top 5 was all over the song saying that he smokes Clutch and Slugger. And ladies and gentlemen, I know that you're waiting for the part of the story where I say that Top 5 was captured in a daring dawn raid of some little Toronto suburb that you've never heard of. But that's not the case. This is where the story ends, and Top 5 is still on the run for murder right now. And he's still going live with DJ Academics, talking crud on the ops, and pretending he's not out here, literally on the run for murder. Are you wanted by anybody or are you good? You straight or are you, you good? I'm straight. You are straight. And of course, everyone's still in the comments saying the feds are watching. Well, clearly, they're not watching hard enough. He was just like my favorite Toronto rapper, literally of anyone, he was my favorite. And I just think he, he was 21 years old, like, there's no way this should have happened. Julian was found by 51 division officers lying on the ground, clinging to life in a large pool of blood in the parking lot of the Shell gas station located at Parliament Street and Richmond Street. Police found the body of 29-year-old Sion Carrington last Wednesday. He died later in hospital. City News has confirmed the victim to be Sion Carrington, seen here in this exclusive video from City News in June 2015. Tributes pouring in today for DeMargio Jenkins, the 21-year-old musician also known as Houdini, was shot and killed at King and Blue Jays Way Tuesday afternoon. Look, I've said it before and I'll say it again. There really isn't anything cool or glamorous about the gang lifestyle. You might enjoy the songs, yeah, the style, the culture, kids, and the lingo that comes out of the roughest, meanest streets, meanest streets in each country around the world. Ain't but the reality of life in gangs saying, is nothing but death, pain, jail, dead, loss, man. injury, and missed opportunities. It I hurts to imagine how different kids. things could have been had each side of this feud not lost so many people with so much potential. Smoke Dog could have been one of the biggest and greatest rappers to ever come out of his city. Houdini's potential was enormous. Bro, you could Houdini tell from the, the talent baby, in the songs uh, that he released that he was clearly gonna go far. But when you're tangled in the streets that deep, no amount of talent or toughness will save you. The smartest thing you can do is get as far away as possible from the area that causes you the most danger. Chief Keith had to escape Chicago to stay alive, and it looks like Presser has gone on to do the very same thing, moving to LA to chase his dream in music, and frankly at this point he is just simply lucky to still be alive after all of the crazy shit that he has been through and around in his life. Over the course of this story, I came across a great clip on Reddit's Torontology, where Mustafa the Poet summed up the scene well. It doesn't matter what anybody says, none of these guys are taking W's. It's funny because a lot of these pieces want to be like, ah, who took the bigger W? No one took a W, bro. Everyone took an L. Everyone has, and it's true, it's sad, but yo, everyone has dead bro. Everyone has in jail. Everyone have, has kids that are poor, that, that you know what I'm saying, that, that don't know how to provide for themselves, don't know how to provide for their families. And for as long as that's the reality, everyone is at a loss, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's facts. No one really ever takes more a dime in the streets, losses, whether it's Chicago, Jacksonville, nobody, Toronto, man. or London. Nobody Whenever you make the decision to lean into the streets, rather than into a better lifestyle trying to do good for your people, you're going to end up taking an L eventually. In many ways, nobody the most inspiring man, and potent story of this whole saga is that of Robin Banks. Of he was shot and paralyzed as a result of his ties in the streets. But after suffering a fate that many people would consider worse than death, he continued to focus on his passions, making music, putting on his people, releasing projects, running his label, and ultimately inspiring the next generation to do better, focus on music, and avoid the worst possible outcomes that street life can deliver. 
A lot of people don't have what it takes to go through what Robin Banks went through and continue going forward. So if Robin Banks can pull through and continue to be a positive inspiration to the city, even after going through one of the hardest losses imaginable, then what's the excuse for the next teenager coming out of Driftwood? With their whole body and brain intact, their whole life ahead of them, and an opportunity to do better than the people that came before them. I hope the next generations of guys coming out of the challenging blocks of Toronto don't have to go through what the previous generation had to suffer through to build this amazing music scene from the ground up. It was a long bloody road to get to this point, and all of the names that you've heard over the course of this story, dead or alive, played their part in building up the Toronto drill scene from nothing. It's because of them that the next generation of young men growing up in the tough areas of Toronto have a shot at making something better of themselves. I just hope that that next generation doesn't blow it. This story meant a lot to me, I hope it meant a lot to you, and thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon. As I said at the start, I'm going to be uploading uncut versions of my videos to Patreon. Ended right there, man. Look, this is the final part. I finally got through with it, bro. It took me a minute to get through with all this shit. But anyway, man, look, bro. I finna wrap this thing up, man. Look, like I always say, man, if you like this type of video and you like this type of content, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and don't forget, don't forget to hit the bell, man. I'm out. I love y'all boys, man. I'm out. Bro, I'm so tired, bro.